So we're hunting a beast in the darkness. I got my obsidian blade, because that's what obsidian's good for. Seeing through the darkness. Figuratively. Anyway, hunting through the darkness. I just turned off the lights. It's really not that dark here. For a monster. I think we found it. I think we found it. It's under the bed. You can't see him, but he's there. There he is. You see the eyes. Hi. It's just my cat. That's it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my channel. If you are new and if you are returning, welcome back. We are officially in the autumn season here in the Northern Hemisphere, particularly in the United States. We love our Halloween season, at least I do. And I think anybody else in this type of line of work and community can guarantee you they love it too. But I can't speak for everybody. I'm only speaking for myself. So this month of October, I wanted to release some interesting content. Definitely gonna continue releasing readings, but a, um, there's a, an extra week, I believe, a weekend in the month of October. So there's gonna be extra an extra vlog or two that I'm gonna hopefully release. In regards to this month's vlog, um, regarding crystals in particular, I wanted to talk about a particular crystal that many, many um, individuals have heard of, I'm sure. And I thought it really Really quite fit the Halloween theme and for those of you who are interested to see all of this additional content that I'm hoping to release please hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified when the content is released my schedule has been quite busy lately so I'm not re releasing as on schedule as I really would prefer but I'm trying <laughs> so bear with me before we begin, I want to shout out Moonlight Crystal Sales Group here. Thank you so much for letting me use some of your images here. Feel free to check out her shop. She has many different stones and crystals and obsidians, so check it out. So the crystal that I want to talk about in this month's crystal vlog is actually not a crystal, technically. It's not a stone, technically. It is technically known as a glass, a type of glass, otherwise known as obsidian. Now, particularly black obsidian or obsidian in general is something that is quite common in the um, stone world, in the crystal world, even though it's technically a glass. But um, what many people use it for can be for varying reasons. And I wanted to talk more about the key reasons why you should possibly have obsidian in your collection. So obsidian, particularly black obsidian, is actually composed of a mixture of molten lava, magma, mixed with um, a cooling effect. So when molten lava and magma cools quickly and rapidly, it forms what we know to be called obsidian. Um, obsidian can come in many different colors and sizes and shapes, of course, but one common color that you'll definitely see it in is what is known as black obsidian. Now, obsidian can usually be found in um, the edges of rhyolite domes, around the outer edges of rhyolite domes, um, or flows along the edges of what are known as dikes and sills. Um, rhyolite, for example, well, just for those of you who are just like, what on earth is rhyolite? Rhyolite is a volcanic equivalent of granite. Just an FYI, a volcanic equivalent of granite. And actually, it kind of looks little bit like you know this whitish type of stone um palish type of stone definitely not obsidian but anyway additionally dikes or sills they're considered to be water barriers they help stop the flow of water or they'll be like a bridge or like a literally like a wall that helps stop the flow of water or river bends um dikes for example are they have like a vertical structure to it whereas sills have a horizontal structure to it and for those of you who are curious to know what exactly i'm talking about here is a picture this is the dike and this is the sill, there you go. <laughs> so a lot of obsidian could be found in these main areas, especially when dealing with um, water elements. So obsidian, particularly black obsidian, was otherwise known as the god of stones in Mayan or Aztec language, um, translated of course. They would call it Itzli, which I'm sure I butchered that, but if you want to see how it's spelled, it's I-T-Z-L-I. It's Lee. 
otherwise known as the god of stones. The ancient Mayans and Aztecs would actually use obsidian, in particular black obsidian, for many, many different purposes. They would use it to craft tools and weaponry. They would use it in combat. They would use it to craft and put together arrows and bows and spears and whatever way I'm sure you can think of to make black obsidian because it was easily able to be modified. It's glass, so they were able to chip away at it or they were able to carve into it to allow them to shape it the way that they needed to use it. Metaphysically, yes, they did use it for metaphysical purposes too, like we do. Metaphysically, they used it for scrying mostly because the obsidian could come across as very thin, almost like a mirror. They would use it for scrying in order to get messages from the beyond or from their ancestors, so to speak. So they would use it for that purpose. Additionally, if they needed to venture into dangerous areas like in caves, places that were spiritually evil they would use black obsidian actually as a protection stone as a way to allow them to see through the darkness so i love to call the stone the stone of darkness for that purpose because it's actually it was actually used as a protection for them a light to see in the darkness especially when they physically couldn't see out of their own eyes and they needed to rely on their third eye it would protect them from any harm from predominantly the spiritual world, let's be quite frank, frank or the other world, um, from anything, anything um, negative or what they probably consider to be really low vibrational beings, if you know what I mean. But they knew that they were protected as long as they had the obsidian upon them. Also, I'm sure they've used it for altar purposes, for meditation purposes and in their prayer. So metaphysically, obsidian has quite a few different uses, especially depending on the color of obsidian that you have. Black obsidian is probably the most common one that you've seen in many um, practices, Reiki healing practices, mediumship practices, anything you can think of, especially in the spiritual community. I'm sure people can tell you different reasons why they use their black obsidian, but predominantly the key purpose of it is to be used as a protection stone, one of the many protection stones. And it's quite powerful in how it does this too. It's actually quite I would like to call it more of one of the aggressive stones, the more aggressive type of um, stones uh, to be used for protection because it doesn't allow anything or anybody through. It's actually really great to be used when it comes to severing ties, literally cutting people off, severing them, getting them out of your life. You're like, you're done. You got that bad boyfriend, that bad girlfriend that just will not leave you be, there you go. Use a black obsidian to sever that attachment. It's great for cord cutting rituals, cord cutting in general. And it's, like I said, it's a bit aggressive with how it does it, meaning that once you do it, it should be done and that's it. Black obsidian metaphysically could also be great for healing traumas, especially sexual abuse traumas, especially physical abuse, mental abuse. It also can cut ties and sever cords and attachments from negative otherworldly things too. So again, that's why I like to call it a more aggressive type of tool to be used in terms of severing and cutting cords and attachments because it needs because it needs to be aggressive with how it works it's dealing with a lot of crap and needs to be tough additionally you can also use it for past life trauma healing and ancient trauma healing it's great for past life regression work if you're doing that or you're doing it with somebody Physically, black obsidian or obsidian in general is used for many different purposes, predominantly for aiding in digestion and detoxifying the body. It reduces arthritis pain, joint problems, cramping. It's also really good when you want to, um, you know, rebalance and touch up and cleanse and clear your root chakra, your earth star chakra, which is located below your root star chakra. For those of you who have never heard of the earth star chakra. Um, but I do want to also state that black obsidian or um, obsidian can definitely be used on any chakra, particularly the black obsidian. Obsidian can come in many different colors and um, variations. So depending on the color of the obsidian, 
obsidian and I'm going to talk about the colors here in a minute but depending on the color of obsidian it could also touch on that chakra so if you have for example mahogany obsidian which is more reddish brown you can touch up on your root chakra particularly more so than perhaps say you know your third eye or your throat chakra but again I think that you can use obsidian or I know you can use obsidian on all your chakras because I know I've used it on all you know my chakras before because cords and attachments are everywhere and like I said obsidian is wonderful at severing them so now I wanted to quickly talk about all the different colors of obsidian that it can come in for those of you who are not familiar with these colors I know I certainly real like didn't realize there were all these different kinds of obsidians out there whoa and for those of you who want to know kind of what they do i wanted to give a brief description on what most of them do um so here we go rainbow obsidian so for those of you who have seen this i'm sure you have it protects the very sensitive people against depression it helps soft-hearted individuals who particularly seem to be more privy to become discouraged to become depressed it's i also know i have personally used rainbow obsidian uh, as an alternative to black obsidian because it has a more gentle um, energy to it definitely wonderful to use on individuals who are more prone to have like panic attacks depression who just are very difficult to come out of that low vibrational state rainbow obsidian helps you know bring a more calming and soothing effect to the individual when you're trying to help them as opposed to black obsidian like i said which can be a bit more aggressive the next obsidian is what I'm sure many of you are starting to see more on the market. I know I have, and that is what is known as obsidian or golden with golden sheen or golden obsidian or golden sheen obsidian. Pick a way to say it. It's gold. It's got a gold sheen. That's the gist of it. So golden sheen obsidian is best used to help you find your purpose. It helps strengthen your inner power. The next mahogany obsidian. Mahogany obsidian is wonderful for clearing negative beliefs out resulting from abuse or trauma, particularly probably you know, self-harm, self-trauma from other people or trauma from other people, emotional abuse, mental abuse. I also want to even say spiritual abuse because I know I've used it on individuals who have had spiritual abuse like religion, for example. So the next obsidian is snowflake obsidian. Snowflake obsidian is great for getting through difficult times because it has those white speckles in them. I like to consider it to be a balancing type of stone, a balanced stone that helps the individual just come back to its over, their overall yin yang energy, their balance energy, and it helps them through difficult times in their life. Now the last obsidian that I was able to find, I know I feel like there's one more type of obsidian out there that I'm not mentioning here, but this one is what is known as pumpkin obsidian. Yay, pumpkin, yeah. Anyway, pumpkin obsidian, it aids in supporting and empowers the individual. It comes with that um, uplifting energy that will definitely help um, chakras like your sacral chakra. Because your sacral chakra is orange and pumpkin obsidian is actually an orange in color, it's probably one of the brighter obsidians um, <laughs> that is out there and it helps with the sacral chakra. And obsidian comes in many different colors and varieties. That's all the colors I was able to locate, you know, pictures for. I'm sure there are many other obsidians out there. I know there's other obsidians out there, different colors and shapes and sizes. And, you know, like I said, depending on the color, it can target those particular chakras as well if you're using it for healing purposes. And the final thing I wanted to briefly touch upon in regards to obsidian is the difference between real or fake obsidian. Unfortunately, this subject matter comes up a lot or, you know, a lot in the crystal industry and it's kind of hard to tell who's faking and who's not. Um, and, you know, at this point in time, it's, it is what it is. When it comes to obsidian, especially black obsidian, it's, it's really hard to distinguish between real and fake because black obsidian can be very dark in color. Um, the best way to really be able to tell is being able to kind of see through it because it's a glass. Now, if you can see through it very, very well, obviously that seems, that sounds fake to me. It will also have, you know, imp imperfections as anything coming from the earth itself, there will be imperfections. So if you have a piece of obsidian that just seems to be a little too 
perfect. Um, you know, there's reason to question it. However, I don't want to completely disregard the fact that sometimes people will shape obsidian in their own way. I know, for example, I personally have a obsidian blade that I can tell was clearly shaped, but I do know it is a real obsidian because of how its energy feels and how it has worked for me. So it's, like I said, it's to each their own. The way that I see it, if it works and you're getting the energy that you need from it and it's helping you the way that it needs to, then it's doing its job as an obsidian. And that is all I have for this crystal vlog on obsidian. I really do hope you enjoyed this content. And this was actually inspired by uh, an episode of Expedition Unknown. I've been watching a lot of Expedition Unknown. There's an episode that talks primarily about black obsidian and how it has helped the Aztecs and the Mayan civilization. It was quite interesting. So it inspired me to create this vlog, plus the fact that I kind of love fucking black obsidian because it's amazing so thank you all for joining me here i really hope you enjoyed the content hit that like button if you did and hit that subscribe button to see the future content i will be releasing this month it'll be fun wishing you all love and light take care everybody